Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. Um, I discovered API like four years ago. I am an um, engineer in agriculture, so I'm not at all in the technical world, and it would not be a technical speech. I think you had a lot, a lot since yesterday. So let's take a breath and let's talk about uh, more functional and how we can do business with the uh, API. So, my name is Theopold Asbrook. I am product manager at API Agro. Um, so, here you have the Twitter if you want to, to, to be in touch. So, when we talk about digital and agriculture, a lot of people still think to old things. Uh, farmers are not really into the digital world. Um, but what we need to know is we really have to has in all sectors, agriculture had um, embraced digital. And you can see, for example, this cow, uh, Marguerite, this is a common name for a cow in agriculture. What we should know is we have more than 100 sensors that could be put on Marguerite to monitor its health and performance, for example. Some key numbers for agriculture and ag tech. Um, we have a lot of farm. In, uh, in France, and only one million people working in the farms. We used to say for one farmer, we have 10 people working for him, with him, or thanks to him, uh, with the agro-industry, for example. And we have almost 80% of farmers using internet. This is more than uh, French uh, median, for example. Farmers declare uh, online their crops, to get subvention from the European Commission, and 9 out of 10 is doing it uh, thanks to internet. And we have a lot also of professional application, and uh, farmers have uh, used a lot, and the number of applications has doubled in two years uh, about uh, application installed in the smartphone. This is an agri-mapping, ag-tech mapping of actors that have been done like uh, one year and a half ago by an external cabinet of uh, advising. Um, we have a lot of things on this, and we have um, traditional companies uh, doing about um, uh, software, editor software for uh, farming management. We have also a lot and an explosion of actors from the IoT, for example, for weather station and things like that. Or we have also new way to do agriculture with urban farming um, or to, to grow insects, for example. But what is interesting is we have more than 200 companies identified on this one, and I think one half of this company just had two years, or less than two years. So we have already a lot of companies that uh, came in the agricultural world to come with technology, they want to apply it, or to do platforms. We have a lot of platformatization in agriculture around our marketplace uh, to buy product or to sell product. So, I hope you understood that agriculture is a great sector. What about API Agro? API Agro, who are we? Um, we were a research project funded by the French Ministry of Agriculture uh, that started in uh, 2014. And the goal of this uh, project was to make a platform to expose data set and API to stop um, copying files, getting files uh, to have problems of version, and things like that. And it's really a, the start of the API development in the agricultural sectors. And after the research project, uh, it turned into a company uh, with a consortium of private and public organizations. We have here uh, like 30, um, 30 shareholders with all economic channels covered. This is what we have in crops, vegetables, vineyard, um, fruits. We have also in breeding and things like that. 
with a national approach, which can be different from other actors, I will explain to it. And also something interesting is um, we have a ethic committee to ensure a fair access to all the data to the whole ecosystem. So these actors really make was uh, the beginning to say, okay, we want to build this platform to expose the data and the API from the whole agricultural sectors. So what we do? Uh, I take this uh, picture from uh, Axway about API life circle. So as any API product, you first designed it, you do modelization, then you can deploy it, you create it, you deploy it, and you have to manage it and for consumers, then ex you expose it for consumer with uh, discovering, monetization, dev portals, and anything else. And what we do, and we are really stepping in about the exposition to do the link between the providers and the consumer. What we don't do, we don't build API, it's not our job. We have many companies and we have many software who do it really well. It's not our job to do it. Um, we don't host them. We don't do operational and deploying and things like that. But once API are deployed, what we are, what we are doing at API Agro, it will bring API to the whole agricultural sectors and the whole ecosystems. So we are here and we are already between the data and algorithm providers and we expose the data, we expose the API in a functional way, in a legal way, with license, term and services, uh, and also for monetization for both data and both API. Two digital service editors who will make application for the farmers. So what we do is we help people creating application, connecting with data and algorithm which is exposed. As you've seen, we have a lot of actors, and many have an expertise of a very, very small domain. Or if you are a farmer and you have also a dairy farming um, work, and also crops, you have to weather station, you have to receive soil analysis, you have to connect all this information to have an overview of your whole farm. So if you can't connect, and find the data and the API, you can't offer to the farmers the good services and the good application. What's inside this platform? I find an article from Kin Lane uh, saying there are seven types of API. So just uh, getting all these types and doing some examples of what we have inside. General data. Uh, general data are about, for example, the, all the assets you can find in the platform, all the API, all the data, all the metadata on the platform. You can also have, with this general data, information about uh, the users or many statistics, open statistics or things like that. You have relative data API. This is all what we have, we can be relative to a person or in all case to an exploitation of to a farm. So it can be the different plots, it can be the different herds, the cows, the pigs, anything that can be linked to the farm or to a part of the farm. We have also static data, static that don't move. For example, we have reference data sets, um, like um, we will see in the next slide. Uh, we have an organism, we are putting um, codification to speak the same language. We have reference data set for this, for pesticide, for example, with codification and labels. It may be nothing, but when we are many, many, many actors, you really need to have the same language to exchange on data. We have evolving data, it's data which is moving. For example, we have product stocks. It's important to have uh, the stocks in real time, or price of raw materials, or things like that. It's something you want to have which is evolving, and you just want to access to it uh, at the right time. You have historical data, and we have two good examples here, with the different yields of the crops uh, over the last 40 years, or weather data. You need weather data and at least a decade for example, if you want to do modelization on a specific place, on a specific plot. We also have API for services, uh, like decision support system. I put some data 
in entry and I want output for this. So we have a lot of decision support system in agriculture to help the farmer to take the good decision. Uh, should I go to applied now my treatment or not? How, what is the amount of fertilizer should I apply? So this is the kind of API we have also in this. And this is the last type, algorithmic. This is not a complete services but it's just part, like machine learning or things like that. We're starting having some. For example, I just send an image and you send me uh, the number of plants on the image or what is the plant on this. So this is services you can uh, call to then build more application. So this is a qu quick overview of the kind of, uh, of API and data you can find in API Agro. So um, this is how it looks like. Uh, a catalog, when you can find all the assets uh, on, on some cards. You have metadata to see what is the producer. Uh, you can filter by territory. You can filter by economic channel, if you are more interested in fruits, in vegetables, or in crops. And you can also choose by thema, if you are interested in soil information, or if you're more about uh, pesticide, because you, it's, uh, it's something interesting, or organic food. I think it's interesting to make two specific points about the exhibition condition and monetization, because with API we've got with business, and this is a lot is something interesting. So API or data provider always stays the only one who choose if they share the data of the API, and there is no common pot. It's not, uh, okay, I put some data so can I, I can access all the data others. No, it's really each one. We choose if data are visible and accessible from anyone, like open data or open API. And open don't mean open bar. We know them. We know it. Um, we can also have data or API that can be visible by everyone, but to have access, you have to do an agreement or a contract with uh, the providers. Or we can have um, visible and access restaurant to specific organism because it can be a commercial partner of a research project and the data, you can share it because there are specific data or you want to share it only with some people. So we can do uh, all of these three level of exhibition and with the same API or the same data, you can mix uh, saying, okay, this part is for everyone, this part is, re is uh, restricted. Another thing is about the monetization. With the API, you have access to services or to data. And we have a lot of use cases saying, OK, I've, I made data, I've made the database, but I want to have a monetization to this. So we have this embedded monetization module to answer any use case. This can be file access for one time, one shot. Export, for example, API access, synchronous or asynchronous access, asynchronous for big files or processing time, uh, which can be long, or fees, which can be uh, charged for extraction or subscription starting. And with the API, what is interesting, it's we can also have monetization plans on specific metrics that can be calls, volume of data, or also in a custom aider, you can make some specific parameters, like the number of plots uh, returned, like the processing time used, or things like that. Some quick use case of using of this platform. Uh, L'Institut de l'Elevage, this is the breeding, French breeding institute, uh, collects, structure, and share reference data set for all the breeders in France. Uh, and thanks to the platform, they centralize uh, bulls available for public riding, species and race codification, listing of settling company, listing of selection company. So that's maybe you, this is very interesting because they are one place to spread to a whole ecosystem. They also have developed decision support algorithm like consanguinity. I send you bulls and cows and you send me consanguinity uh, not on this and that would help the breeder to do the selection. Another one, and it was uh, presented uh, yesterday by the French Ministry of Agriculture uh, about pesticide use. Uh, this can be represented by the frequency treatment index, 
FTI or EFT en français, is an important indicator for farmers. It's included like in contracts for environmental commitment or programs. And um, there was no clear uh, calculating function and calculating room. It was in a PDF document, but each one implemented it in its own way. And they need reference data to do the calculation. And to end with that, the French Ministry of Agriculture opened an API for first this reference data to be used in the calculating function, but also they offer a calculating algorithm with results that can be certified by the, by the French Ministry. So this is one also another use case. And the last one is about uh, weather uh, data uh, that have been opened by a French organization, which named Meteo France, which is a national organization. And uh, they just put the data like this in open data, but uh, it was not uh, very useful for uh, developers because they were just grip to format uh, data. So what we did is we integrate all the files and we offer an API to say, OK, if you have just a latitude and a longitude, you just send it in the, as parameters to this API and you will have the last uh, prediction for weather stage, for, for, for weather, uh, for weather. And this has been used then by in Hackathon, for example, when in one hour they integrate and the, the API, which is quite simple, just latitude and longitude. Uh, we spent 10 days to integrate the full uh, weather uh, treatment uh, from uh, Meteo France, and they can use it in one hour for the Hackathon. So this API available helps them to go faster uh, in the development. Same for decision tool for mildew in Basel, um, where they use the prediction to uh, predict uh, if there is a risk or not uh, in disease for the Basel. This is more about a functional way from one provider to many others, but we also have uh, interest by the platform for collaborative and collective projects. Uh, we are discussing initiative uh, positioning API Agro at the exchange data platform for agricultural chambers, technical institute, accounting organism, advisory services, private companies, startup. So a lot of different actors that need to exchange data because they are maybe on the same territory and they want to mix economic data, uh, agronomic data, weather data to do services together at the territory scale, for example. So we are discussing with TerraSolis and Harmony, which are two associations of actors. We are also talking about in economic channels approach, for example, the genetics in breeding. We need to get the data not only for the co in France, but it's at Europe scale. You can't only do the selection on some race with only French, uh, French one. And we have also about the pesticide economic channels. They need to put data to get data. And thanks to the API, uh, we can expose all the API on the same platform and favor uh, this exchange. And we also have this in research and collaborative project, uh, especially in European project in H2020, for example. We are not alone on this. For example, there is other initiative, uh, one from France, which is named Aplifarm, but it's not really the same uh, functional. We have here in, at API Agro, we are in a decentralized approach. Each one keeps its API deployed, and um, rather than Aplifarm just say, we will do a mutualization or information system. Like we will mutualize database, API together uh, like this. So we are not alone, but we are not in the same um, philosophy uh, about this. Another one from Germany is named AgriRouter. Uh, it's more about a message dispatcher. Say, OK, I want to send this information to this and these people, and uh, the AgriRouter will automatically dispatch message and do the equipment. But these systems need data to, for example, Aplifarm may need some information about weather that could be on API Agro, or they need to connect 
to other systems and to other uh, communities. And hopefully, they use API, so we can help on this. As we are not alone, we are also a whole ecosystem. Uh, in agriculture, you have cooperative, you have advisory service, you have technical institute, you have fundamental research, you have accounting uh, companies, and we do a lot of web conference uh, to explain the API. We do evangelization. Why use API to exchange data? It's not still um, a common uh, to say, okay, let's go API uh, for this. We, can we still have some file exchange with FTP or things like that. Um, we also organize a hackathon uh, to say, okay, you are not at ease about selling or uh, sharing your data, but you will do this in a hackathon, which is very restricted with a small amount of data, and it's about uh, more about trust. And okay, it, it worked well. Uh, my data have been valorized in a prototype, so okay, now I can open because I see the added value to open my data. So that's a lot about evangelization. We also organize data and API hunt. Uh, this was about organic uh, data set, for example. And our next event will be a connect aton, uh, because some API are really um, weighted uh, in the agricultural world. And when they will be, when this open API will be open, we will organize a connect aton to um, invite all the ecosystem to connect to this API. In conclusion, three points. First point is about trust, because when you speak about data, trust is always one point. API Agro is an initiative from the research project that was laid by the French Ministry of Agriculture, funded by the French Ministry of Agriculture, but which it was uh, realized by technical institute and organisms uh, from farmers to answer to farmers' fears, to have their data gone away, where no governance on this. So this is an answer to these fears, to lost um, the data. Innovation, because when you have API and you have expertise visible and available, and when you have a legal, technical, commercial framework, how I can access to this, so you favor innovation. And this is a big point, I guess, of this project, because we have only why we have did this. It's really to bring all the ecosystem on the same platform, because if you all have API, but you can't discover it, you don't know what exists, it's really hard to connect easily to other actors. And as we are many, many, many in agriculture, uh, we need this kind of place to really go further in innovation and don't repeat the well. And the last thing, ecosystem. Together we go further. This is why we did API Agro. This is the key. If we don't have ecosystem, if we don't bring ecosystem among the same platform, we are useless. We are only useful because we have this whole ecosystem exposing providing data, and also consuming for this. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.